All right, everybody, thanks for coming back. I know this has been a long time coming, but we have a lot going on in the shop, and I'm getting to this Enticer Long Track 540 build now. It's going to be pretty cool. When dealing with the Yamaha, the motor mounts are kind of weird, so it's not as easy to mount up as most sleds, so that's what my biggest issue has been with this whole thing. I've got a chain case out of a Scandic. It's got reverse and forward on it. It's going to be going into this. I've got pogos off a of Scandic as well. They're going to go onto this. We're going to hopefully get those welded or tacked into place today. And you know what? There's just a ton of metal on this that is coming off because it's insanely heavy and we just don't need that much. So I'm going to start grinding and cutting. We're going to get these, uh, these front pogo mounts welded in here today. That's our main thing. Now this came with a leaf spring suspension and that's no darn good for what we're doing. Now it's time to start cutting. Muffler mount that hardcore. It's not required. Kind of crazy. Kind of crazy. A three inch diameter hole saw. The pogos that we're putting in are three inches. We just luckily had this thing out. So it just works out great. And I'm just going to more or less angle it the same direction. I have to take that down a little more. Not where I want it. Want it there. Come on. I'm just holding this blade on the same angle that the old uh, ski spindles went through. It's going to give us the right kind of rake on the front of the sled. You don't want those pogos standing straight up and down. You kind of want them raked a little bit forward when you're riding. And yes, I'm eyeballing it. So we're that far, and we're getting held up on there, but I need that because that's my guide. Now what, Jamie? And I need to almost, you know what I need to do? I need to use a longer drill bit, go right through, and then come up through the bottom. That's what I do. Look at that. 
to get rid of this big chunk here. How awesome is that? Ten mil. Oh, there's on my, one on the uh, red. On my fingers. I got it with my fingers. Pound. Okay, look at that. So, if you look at this. Oh. Coming together. How sweet. Just weld that all the way in and around. Yeah. One. Next. That's how we like to do things around here. <laughs> what do you think it's going to throw you off a little bit? <laughs> Jamie's worried. You should measure that over so it's the exact distance. Well, you know what? I might be out by about an eighth of an inch, but those are the tolerances I can live with. <laughs> and I don't have to ride it. This is Jamie's sled. But it's going to have about a 32 inch stance with the ski skins, you know, probably an eight or 10 inch ski skin. It's going to be in around, you know, 34 or 36 inches. It'll be good. We rock and roll. Boy's going to have to learn how to ride. Oh yeah, here we go. a bit of abuse on this job. Now that's as far as I can go. The drill more or less bottoms out. And I work my way up. Beautiful. Ten mil. Piece of metal got messed up. There. So that's going to be. Yeah, right on. Pogo suspension. Ski do pogo here. Okay, so suspension, front suspension figured out. I'm not going to really tack these in yet. I still am going to go through here and clean up a bunch of this junk that is kind of overkill on this sled. And then uh, that'll be it for this episode. Let's get to the rest of this right now. Gotta love this old claw hammer. Keeley probably built tree forts with this. So I'm going to tear this off, this I don't know, what, it's where the handlebar is mounted to here. It's extremely overbuilt so we're going to ditch it and then I'm going to probably build a 
kind of like an A-frame, kind of more like a steering hoop on the newer sleds. So good old Jamie there can stand more forward and uh, have a more comfy ride. Overkill. I mean, that's why these sleds lasted so long, right? They lasted so long because they were so overbuilt. Keep that. That's where the pull cord goes through. It'll come in handy. baby. Okay. Come along. Hey. Junk pile. Now, looking good. Looking, I'm liking the way things are coming along. Good God, that's all steel. Bolted in on the last. Might leave that bumper on. Give it that old school enticer look. So I've been trying to figure out you know, what kind of drivetrain we're going to put in this. It's only a 540, so you don't necessarily have to have a cross shaft in it. I had one, or a jack shaft, you might call it. I had in my Elan 540, just a standard chain case, and it did all right. So I'm going to use this chain case here out of a Blizzard, or out of a uh, Scandic 377. It's got reverse on it. It's in very good condition. It'll work out quite well. And it'll be easier to mount. If I had to get into mounting jack shafts and all that, it's just going to be a little bit too much. And we don't need it. Not at this point. Now. Just checking that bearing out. I'm going to have to have to mow a hole right through the bottom of this to mount this down pretty low. So I'm going to take out, let me see, I'm going to zip out all those studs, all those studs are coming out. I'm going to cut out the bottom of this pan. Yes, the chain case is going to stick out the bottom, but we're going to have, you know, that much clearance between the ground and the chain case. If Jamie hits something with that, then, it's his machine. No, it'll turn out all right. As long as he don't, long, as long as he doesn't let his wife drive it. We're okay. All right, so I'm gonna cut those off. And then I'm gonna gnaw at the bottom of that. Lower that case in. We're putting a bigger track on it. Let me see. How wide is that tunnel? 16 and a quarter inches on the outside. Let me see on the inside. Uh, what the hell? 16 and a half? I don't know. Let's try up here. <clears throat> it's bowed out a little. I mean, it's 16 and a half. So we get a 15 inch track in there. I'm gonna pop off these studs that come out that hold the old chain case on. The chain case that came in this originally was just way too underbuilt. And the axle shaft, I mean, was, I think it's about an inch square. It's an actual piece of square tubing with about a half or a three quarter inch little spigot on the end or a little, I don't know, little knob on the end where it goes into a uh, bearing and there's no way that that would handle the 
beast. Beastie. It needs to go way down. Need to drop that down. Another. Well, let's work this out. All right, I'm just trying to figure out how I'm going to mount this drive axle in here with the drive shaft. We need enough clearance for a two and an eighth inch paddle track, two and a quarter, something like that. Basically, I'm going to have to cut at the bottom of this tunnel. But if I make the shaft more or less flush, if I make, if I make the shaft flush with this tunnel, I'm going to have all kinds of room in here, all kinds of clearance. I'm going to run these extrovert drivers. I just stole them from Keeley. And that's going to be perfect. But that's going to be another episode. Quick and dirty. That's how we get things done. But I have to go home, do some more thinking, take, take some measurements. I just, don't want to, I just don't want to jump in all at once, right? But I'd say it's about five, 10 pounds lighter already. Things are coming along. Pogos are gonna look pretty good. I'm gonna cut out this old belly pan that's just destroyed. I'm gonna put UHMW in here, nice and slippery, and gonna ditch this extra weight of this crap. Boy, this has been beaten on hard. Yep, coming along. Stay tuned for the next episode. I gotta thank you guys for coming back. Make sure you check us out on Facebook. We just had that tunnel done on the Elan, and it's looking pretty sharp. It's been powder coated, looks pretty good. The IQR is coming along as well, and things are rolling along here. We still have a little bit of time, not too much snow on the ground, but we're pretty anxious to get everything done. <laughs>